happy to be good in the Lord, isn't it? Hallelujah. It's very happy. It's very good to be busy in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not busy doing nothing, but it's good to be busy in the Lord. Amen. It is good to be busy on the receiving end and getting all the good. Praise God. Amen. How many of you want to be busy receiving all the good from God? Hallelujah. Only a few. How many of you want to be busy receiving all the good from the Lord? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's what happened to me since 8.30 this morning. <laughs> Amen. I'm receiving all the good that the Lord has for me today. So many good things happening for me today and more and more to come. And uh, you are a partaker of my grace. So all the good that has happened to me will happen to you. Amen. Hallelujah. If you would just receive it. Amen. 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 We have a wonderful teaching for us today. We're still doing the pillars of your destiny, the pillars that you can't afford not to have. Amen? And tonight we're doing a great pillar. It's called the pillar of intercession. Amen. And I have to do my very best to stick to my notes because there's so much when it comes to intercession. It's such a rich subject and it's such a powerful subject. You know, a lot of times we think that how come things are not happening or not, how come things are not happening fast enough. And the Lord gave me a very powerful word which I'm going to preach on one day. <laughs> it's called preparation. You have to understand that God does everything with preparation. He prepared for the coming of Jesus. He prepared for the coming of the Holy Ghost. He prepared for the coming of the end times. He prepared for the coming of the tribulation. So everything that God did and God does and God is still doing, you'll notice that happens by preparation. And a lot of times that the things are not happening in your life is because you haven't taken the time to prepare. You haven't taken the time to prepare spiritually, haven't taken the time to prepare mentally, emotionally, volitionally, haven't taken the time to prepare physically. Because we have to understand that the order in the kingdom of God is spirit and soul and body. And yet the order of this world is the body and then the soul and the spirit. I mean, most of them, they ignore the spirit, except, you know, when it comes to the spirit of the devil. So we have to understand that for God to move in our lives, it's very important that we are connected to his frequency. That you are of the same frequency as the Holy Ghost. That you are of the same wavelength of the whole, as the Holy Spirit, that you are the same as the angels. And that takes time. It takes time to train yourself spiritually so that you're ready in your soul when God is moving. So that you're at the right place and at the right time when the Holy Spirit is moving. So there is a preparation that Christians need to get into. We're talking about being successful in God. Amen. Amen. Because we have to understand that everything in this world moves by a certain course. The Bible calls it the course of this world. There are causes that are happening in this world. And of course, that is the course that is divine. And that's what we are looking into tonight. I'm still growing and I'm still learning and I'm very excited about what I'm learning in the Lord and I'm very excited about what I'm discovering in the Bible. If you want to be successful in God, it's the same as being successful in the natural. Knowledge in the natural will put you in the place and the position of being successful. How much more knowledge in the spirit? Knowledge in the spirit is very important when it comes to divine success. If you want to have a successful marriage, then you need to learn about marriage. You need to learn how to conduct yourself in your marriage. If you want to be a successful parent, then you need to know how the, what, what are the ways that you need to parent. I have to say that when I first became a Christian, I got into a, long of, a lot of wrong teaching. When I first became a Christian, I was fervent, all right, but I got into a lot of wrong teaching, so as a result, I did a lot of wrong things. And I didn't get the result that, you know, God had for me. But praise God, I'm a lot better now. <laughs> praise God, I'm discovering a lot more from the Word of God. Amen. It's very easy to be swayed by what's around you and the people around you or what's called a religious circle. 
You know, but it's very important for you to get into the Word of God, the teaching. Amen. Because the teaching, the Word of God, will cause you to stick to the right course. And things that are so simple won't be as puzzled or as complicated as a lot of other people will teach you. All right, let's get into intercession. Look at page one of your notes. The ministry of the Holy Spirit through believers. Now, we have to understand that when it comes to the ministry of intercession, the precious Holy Spirit is the wonderful intercessor. To intercede means to stand in the gap for someone. Of course, Jesus. Jesus, how many of you know that Jesus is the greatest intercessor? Yes, he's called the Lamb of God, right? He's the one who stood in the gap for us. Without the, interse without the intercession of Jesus, none of us will be here. And I want you to know that every parent should be an intercessor for your children. You cannot expect your children to succeed automatically without your intercession. Every husband, every wife should be an intercessor. Every Christian should be an intercessor. And if you want your life to be successful, you have to get into the ministry of intercession. Because understand that we are created as a humanity. We are not created as individuals. And we do affect one another in a positive or in a negative way. Yes, the Christians, we are separated from the world by the blood of Jesus. But understand that in the times of war, for example, the First World War, the Second World War, the Third World War, understand that in a time of global war, everybody is having it hard and was having it tough. If you look at the history of China, which you saw a little bit last Sunday when we played it to you, to show you, during the time of the Cultural Revolution, during the time of the communist takeover, the churches in China had a difficult time, had a very tough time. The workers that we worked with in China, they told us, they told me that they had to hide in the cotton field from the communist army. So when the communist army was around, they had to hide in the cotton field, and not do anything. But then when the army left, then they could start having their church. And if you could just go online and go to YouTube and look at what happened in China during the time of the communist rule. I mean, it's still communist, but it's not as, as anti as before. They had a very tough time. So please understand that humanity, God created humanity as a whole. And we do affect one another because that's the way that God has created all men. And the blood of Jesus, it's true, had separated us from all evil to the extent that we stand in the gap for one another. So you cannot take that message as to say, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm enjoying all the best from God, I've no time to intercede for anybody, I've no time to, to pray for an unbelieving world, and you have a critical and a judgmental Christ attitude towards all the non-Christians. It's not like that. It's not like that. Understand that for God so loved the world, Okay, so the way that you intercede and to the extent to which you intercede will affect your life and your world. And I want you to look at point number two, the intercessory ministry of believers. Now, please understand that every believer, you have the responsibility to intercede. And understand that when it comes to prayer, it's not something that you like to do. When it comes to singing a song, when it comes to praise and worship, a lot of us enjoy it. When it comes to church camp, when it comes to church uh, functions, activities, we enjoy it. But understand that when it comes to prayer, that your body doesn't like it. And the thing is that the devil will deceive you into thinking that, Oh, you're not moved by the Holy Spirit, and that's why you're not praying. The devil can deceive you into thinking, Oh, I will only pray when I have the mood by the Holy Spirit to pray. And it all sounds so spiritual, but it's not biblical. The same way that you need to go to work every day, whether you feel like it or not, the same way that you need to go to work every day, whether you like it or not. The same way you need to go to prayer every day, whether you like it or not. The difference is that you go to work because you need to, 
you need your bread and butter, and so you force yourself to. That's how the world operates. The world operates by need. But God's kingdom operates by voluntary service. Voluntary service. God will stand back and look at you and see how you live. He will stand back, he will watch you whether you are faithful to obey his word without his prompting, without him compelling you, without him telling you to. Whether you would go to church, whether you would come to Friday night, whether you would study the word, whether you would pray, whether you would show love towards people, he's always watching because he needs those that would rise up, those that he can trust his power with. God works from the heart. And that's what differentiates Saul from David. Remember, God told Samuel to anoint one of the brothers of Jesse, one of the children of Jesse. And then Samuel was about to anoint the eldest son because by the look. But the word of God said, well, God said, no, 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 not like this one. He said, I look at the heart. And God was right. David had the love of God, and David had the love of people. And David, as you can see in the book of Psalms, he's a mighty prayer warrior an intercessor. A great lover for the word of God, a great lover for people, and a great lover for the kingdom of God, a great lover for the word of God. So God had his choice. Amen. He's very different from, you know, the way that God moves is very different from the way the world moves. God sees the heart. Because whatever he gives you, it is a gift in the heart. And whatever he gives you, he will not take back. So the intercession of the believers comes. Comes from you. The intercession, the intercessory ministry of the believers come from the inside of you. Is there a sacrifice involved? Yes, there is a sacrifice. The Bible calls it the labor of prayer. There is a laboring. There is a sacrificing. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. Intercessory ministry is our privilege. It is our privilege to work with God. And once you get into the ministry of intercession, you will start to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. You will start moving in the Spirit because God is looking for intercessors. He's looking for prayer warriors. He's really looking for them because there are not many around. And if you look at Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30, and a lot of testimonies that you see, they happen because of people interceding and praying. The, the, the miracles that you're seeing today, they, it has been prepared maybe three months before or even three years before. The Bible talks about without sowing, there is no reaping. If there are no seeds sown, then there will be no fruit gathered. All right? Because that's the way that God works. And if you look at Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land. Now this is a very powerful scripture because a lot of us, we have a wrong understanding. We think that God is sovereign. He can do whatever he wants. I have to tell you that it's a lie from the devil. God cannot do whatever he wants. He can only do what you allow him to do. Nothing happens in your life without your cooperation. Nothing happens in your life without your choice. If God could do anything he wants, he would have saved everybody in the world. There won't be even one person going to hell. You won't have so much bad news on television. So don't think that God can do whatever he wants. He's sovereign. No, he's not. Okay? We are not living in the dispensation that God can exercise his sovereignty. Why? Because God has given the power to rule this earth to men. 
You have the power to rule on earth. And that's why the devil is after you. Because he can't rule without you. The devil can only destroy your family through you. He can only destroy your life through you. The same with the Holy Spirit. He can only bless you through you. He can only bless your children through you. He can only bless the people around you through you. He can only prosper through you. Get this and get this very, very solid and strong and clear in your heart. All the power to rule has been given to you. Okay? Get this very, very clear. You are not a victim. Okay? You are not a victim. But you do have to rise up. Rise up to the knowledge revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. It's very important. It's very, very important. I've had testimonies and I've shared with different people. Like all through this week, I've had the devil attacking me at night with a lot of coughing. I was coughing very bad. And uh, I mean, instinct, by my instincts, I was thinking, oh, it's all right. You know, I wanted to sleep, just cough and sleep at the same time. You know, that's how the body would react. But my spirit said, no, rebuke it. Do something about it. And so I rebuked the spirit of coughing. I said, you foul spirit of affliction, you're not allowed to afflict my throat. You're not allowed to, in you're not allowed to irritate my chest and my breathing. And I have to tell you, within two minutes, the coughing was completely gone. Gone. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to understand that God has given his power to men. And you need to rise up to that. And there cannot be doubts in you. I mean, you have to rise up to who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you look at Ezekiel again, it's God speaking. He said, I sought for. So God is still seeking. I sought for a man. God is seeking for you to be the intercessor in your family. God is seeking for you to be the intercessor in your church. He's seeking for you to be the intercessor in your community. Are you answering that call? Are you answering that call? Are you answering that call? He's seeking for someone to pray for the government of Australia. He's seeking for someone to pray for this land of Queensland. The weather forecast said that, the, you know, we're going to have a lot of rain. And when you hear it, when you hear it on the news, are you going to pray and stand in the gap and influence the weather over this country, this piece of land? Or are you just sitting there and just wait till things happen? An intercessor is a proactive believer who's going to lay hold of the future of his family, of his nation, of his country. Christianity is not a religion because religion will teach you to be passive. Buddhism teaches people to just retire, not to think about all the troubles of this life and just go into yoga, or go into transcendental meditation, into a, a, a wacky world, retreat, Christianity is advanced. It's advanced. Christianity is advanced. Christianity is rise up to your calling. Rise up to who you are in Christ Jesus. Rise up to be a leader for your country. Rise up to be a godly influence for your country. That's Christianity. The reason why you want to be successful is because God has put the desire in you to be successful. The desire to be successful comes from God. It's not from you. God does not want you to just toil every day with two jobs, three jobs. No, he wants you to succeed. And so you have to know his way of doing things and flow with him. Otherwise, you'll be struggling and striving like the rest of the world, even though you're going to heaven. And if you continue to look at your nooks, the intercessory ministry of believers. 
You have to embrace this ministry. Every Christian has a ministry. You know, your greatest enemy is the demon of being selfish or self-centered. Being selfish and self-centered only focus on yourself, focus on your needs, focus on your problems, focus on your ambition. But that is the way of failure because no one who is selfish can be successful, even in the natural. A selfish and self-centered person is on his way to failure, total failure. Your soul tells you to withdraw, but your spirit tells you to advance. Your soul tells you just be shy, you know, there is no need to interact, there is no need to talk to others. But your spirit tells you to interact, to reach out in love. So it's up to you to decide to listen to your soul or to listen to your spirit. And you need to start sowing seeds of love so that when somebody else is in need, you start helping and start helping so that when you are in need, then the assistance and all the help is released for you. Can we say amen? There has to be a sowing for a reaping to happen. That's the ram of the spirit. But if you're always self-centered and selfish and withdrawn, then you'll be left to yourself. And that's the spirit of being lonely and spirit of being withdrawn. That's called the spirit of dejection. And that's that of God. That is of the devil. The spirit of dejection, the spirit of rejection, the spirit of inferiority, all of that is of the evil one. Now, if you look at the intercessory ministry of believers, number one, we can do it through the leading of the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Holy Spirit will lead you to intercession. Okay? The Holy Spirit will lead you to intercede. How? By suddenly you see the face of that person. Or suddenly you have a prompting on the inside to pray for that person. Or suddenly you recall uh, something that that person has said or something that's to do with that person. You may not be prepared to pray for that person, but even when you're sleeping, suddenly, you know, an image pops up. Or, like, it happened to me when I was in China, like a burden. Like I would be sleeping, but then there's a burden in my heart for that person. And I knew that that person is in trouble and he needed prayer. So that is the intercessory ministry of the Holy Spirit. Understand that the Holy Spirit is about loving people. It's about loving people. And if you want to get into the ministry of the Holy Spirit, everybody wants signs and wonders and miracles. But the the ministry of the Holy Spirit is basically the ministry of intercession. If you have no time to pray for people and all you want is to move in signs and wonders and and, and miracles, that doesn't add up. That's not God. God is not in the business of showing off. God is in the business of building up people. Can we say amen to that? So the love for men has to start in the heart in private. Amen. There is no such thing called public ministry. Everything goes from the heart. It's from the heart. God is not in the business of showing off anybody. I mean, all the powers are not with people. They are from the Holy Spirit anyway. All right? So number one, you get, into minis- you get into intercession by the leading of the Holy Spirit through a prompting or through a picture or through an impression or through recalling something or through the Holy Spirit keep put- putting a burden in your heart for somebody. And the intercessory's ministry, number two, is you need to understand the responsibility to intercede for others. Now, responsibility is a beautiful word. Can you think of parents that have no responsibility towards their children? What kind of parents do you think they are? Terrible parents, right? If parents that are not responsible for their children, they are terrible parents. And we all, I mean, we saw the news recently of um, the twins died of uh, starvation because their parents basically neglected them. And the, tr- and the twins die. The future of your children depend 
on your intercession. The future of this country depends on your intercession. The future of your family depends on your intercession. The future of your church depends on your intercession. If you look at all the cows, if you look at Buddhism, you look at Taoism, you look at all the different cows, none of them talk about praying for people. They only practice transcendental meditation, which is withdrawal into self, yoga. Withdrawing into yourself and you enter into the state of what's called nirvana, emptiness. And in that state of emptiness, then demons can start talking to you. But Christianity is not like that. Christianity is actively engaging yourself in prayer for someone else. Prayer is your love in action. There are so many fathers that work so hard to provide for their children financially, and yet they never work in prayers to provide for their children spiritually. And no wonder their children end up in problems. There are so many male that provide that work so hard to provide for their wife financially, and yet they have never prayed for their wife spiritually. And no wonder the marriage fell apart. You know, the world's thinking is very crooked. The world hasn't got it right. But the Bible tells us the way to do it. You think that prayer is only reserved for a few very spiritual people. No, you're wrong. Prayer is for every believer, every Christian. I'm sure, I'm 100% sure, when we go to heaven, God is going to reward all the intercessors because they are the ones that work together with him to impact the world and the history of man. I'm 100% convinced of this. You may think that all the very famous, you know, evangelists and all the TV ministers, you know, but I tell you, there will be rewards in heaven that will be given to the intercessors that nobody know, knows about. So it's up to you whether you want to be drafted into the army of intercession. If you, I can ask you to look at 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 23. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 23. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 23. How many of you know that we are called to be the priests unto God? Lift up your hands. If you know that you're called to be a priest. Only a few. How many of you know that you're called to be a priest unto God? Okay, if you don't, I'm telling you now. <laughs> what, is, what does a priest do to pray? What does a priest do? A priest is somebody who stands in the gap for the average people, come into the presence of God, do, you know, praying before God, and then receiving the blessing from God and give to the people. Okay? So a priest is somebody who stands before God for people and stand before people for God. That's what a priest would do. So if you look at 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 23, Samuel is saying, Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. So Samuel is saying that if I don't pray for you, I sin. So if you don't pray for your children, you are sinning as a father. If you don't pray for your children, you are sinning as a mother. So the absence of prayer, which leads to the activities of demons... And that's why it is a sin. It is missing God's mark. It is not getting what God wants to give to you. Prayer is not a feeling, a mood, or an emotion. Prayer is a privilege and also is a command from God. Prayer is a command for God. Too many of us, you know, we just, you know, cross our arms and see. What's our future going to be like? I hope my future is good. I want you to know that God has put a tool in your hand that you can decide what your future is going to be like. It's called prayers. That's why Christians are proactive. You're never behind time. You need to be ahead of time. 
So time is like, if I can pick, picture this for you, time is like a, a, a container, put it that way. Like your life, for example, you have 50 years of life ahead of you, so you have 50 years like containers in front of you. And when you pray, you're putting things in the container. You're putting things in the container. You're putting things in the container. So when that day happens, all that you put in the container, plus all of God's blessings, will show up for you. But if you've never put anything in the container, then the devil will start dumping all the rubbish in your container, and then what will happen to you in your future will be what he has dumped in your container. That's the function of time. That's what it is for. Time is a container. It holds what's going to happen to you. That's why you can recall your past because it's still recorded. It's still in the container. All right? So what is prayer? What is intercession? Intercession is a decision, it's a commitment, and it's a discipline. Intercession is a decision, it's a commitment, it's a discipline. I don't think it is wise if you are a businessman to just spend so much time doing your business and business and business and have no time for prayer. Because your prayers should go before your business. Then you don't have to work so hard. Would you agree? Let's look at point number three. The body of Christ anointing. If you look at James chapter 5, verse 16, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. What is this scripture revealing to us? This scripture is revealing to us that we can affect one another. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So, in the context of this scripture, we are taught that we can affect one another, we can bless one another, we can change one another. Why? Because your prayer releases the power of God. We have the power to curse or to bless one another. We've seen a lot of cursing happening in the world. We've seen the wars, how people can destroy one another. We've seen divorce, how people can hurt one another. We've seen parents hurting the children or the children hurting the parents. We've seen the students rebelling against the teachers or the teachers abusing the, the, the students. So the, the area of human relationship is a big thing. It's a big thing in the Bible. And the way that we can influence human behavior, the way that we can influence human relationships is through prayer. And also through how we conduct ourselves with one another. Okay? God has ordained ways for us so that we don't have to be so sad. Okay, what can prayers do? Look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. Wherein in time past you walked according to the cause... Of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Now, I want you to understand that the world has a course. Whether it's Australia or Hong Kong or China or the Philippines or Indonesia, they're all going in the same direction. Because it's the course. It's the cause of devil. It's the cause of destruction. It's the cause of mutual destruction. It's the cause of self-destruction. The devil, what he's doing is to get the people to hurt each other and getting the people to hurt themselves. Can you see that? And then on top of that, influencing the cause of nature with catastrophes, calamities, pestilence. And of course, in a big scale, you have war, you have financial crisis. So the world, yes, there is a cause that the world will follow. But it's not the will of God for us to follow that course. Now, the Bible calls the devil, can you see that? The prince of the power of the air. Now, if you are receiving the fresh manna, which is very, very important and good for you to receive, I'm, you will be receiving the fresh manna that talks about the wicked wind. It is true that there is a wicked wind that is blowing in the air. 
There is a wind that is blowing across the world, the wind of wickedness, the wind of evil. The voice of fornication, the voice of adultery, the voice of covetousness, the voice of anti-religion or anti-Christianity. There is a wind blowing. There is an atmosphere of wickedness and evil and unbelief. There is an atmosphere of religion that has no power. There is an atmosphere of just dependence on people and not believing in God. You call it atheism. Yes, there is an evil wind that is blowing. Please know that. And understand that without your prayers, your children will be very much influenced by that. And even yourself. If you are not walking in wisdom and knowledge and understanding, you'll be influenced by the atheism of this world instead of by the Word of God. You'll be believing more in the doctors than you believe in the Word of God. It is so easy to believe in technology instead of believing in the Word of God and the power of God. So there is a wind that is blowing that is contrary to the wind of the Spirit. It's an evil wind. It's a wicked wind. Okay? It's very, very important. So it's very, very important that we understand, we understand why we have to pray and what can prayers do for us. If you look at uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, and look at your notes, number one, prayers will change circumstances. There is a cause of evil. If you read the book of Esther, if you haven't read it, I encourage you to read it because it's, it's not a very long book. It's quite a short book. And you notice that there is a cause that the devil is following in the book of Esther by the name of Haman. There is a cause that Haman is following because why? He's driven by the devil behind the whole thing. There's a cause that Haman was pursuing, and the end of that cause, or the goal of that cause, is to destroy all the Jews. And of course, in real history, you see Hitler multiplying, I'm sorry, you see Hitler exactly duplicating the book of Esther, the cause of Haman. And it's still happening today. There are people who just hate Jews for some reason. And we know what's that reason. The reason is the spirit of Antichrist. But when you pray, and as you can see in the book of Esther, the, the cause was changed. Instead of, instead of Haman destroying the Jews, it ended up with Haman being destroyed by the Jews. You see how the whole situation was changed. Okay, that's very, very important. How was it changed? Through people that would commit themselves to the cause of God. Don't despise yourself. Don't think that you are the minority. If you would stand up to God's calling, you are a very important person. You are a very, very important. And please embrace the sacrifice. It is true, and I have felt it many times. It is true that sometimes you feel that you're the only person left. Sometimes you feel that you are the only person that everybody is depending on. Embrace it. It's an honor. It's a privilege. God has drafted you. God has put you in that position. Do it. Don't look at this and that and that. How come they're not doing it? How come they're not doing it? And then you get into that self-pity and you get into that blaming mode. Embrace your position and achieve the goal that God has put in your heart. Amen. Amen. Be willing to be an Esther. Be willing to be a Mordecai. God is no respecter of persons. Esther did not have a degree. You don't, need to be, you don't need to have a degree to be a great person in God's kingdom. He's just a simple village girl. Mordecai, an inferior citizen. But all you need is a devotion and a commitment to God over and above your concern for yourself. Make that decision. Ask God, God, I want you to shine through me. I want you to shine through me. I want you to use me to bless people. I want you to use me to rescue souls. I want you to use me to build your church. I want you to use me. Lord, use me. Here I am. Send me. Rise up to that greatness of heart. 
that the Holy Ghost has put in you. Amen. Do not despise yourself and don't excuse yourself. Get into the discipline of being a Christian. Amen. Number two, what can prayers do? Prayers can hold back satanic forces or the evil wind which is blowing in the air. When you pray, you can hold back the influence of fornication, the influence of addiction, the influence of rebellion. Even when you're watching the news and you see those teenagers die of drug addiction. Did you watch the news the other day? Talking about the teenagers now, they all go to so many parties and parties and parties. And in those parties, they're selling drugs, they're selling pills, right? And even, that guy, even the, those boys, they had taken so many. But because the, the, it takes time for the drug to process itself in the body, he thought that he hasn't got enough because he's still not high enough. So he kept taking more and more and he died. These people need us Christians to stand in the gap and pray for them. To intercede for them. Nothing happens without prayers. Nothing happens without prayers. I mean, people like that, they need us to stand in the gap. I mean, the parents, how come they, they are so addicted to, to gambling, so addicted, I don't know, to whatever, that they would just neglect their twins and just walk past without even in opening the door and see what happened to their babies. That has to be devilish, won't you think? That has to be devilish. That has to be devilish. And who can deal with demons but Christians? Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. So it's in my heart to start a prayer team in our church. It's time for us to, to stand in the gap and pray. I know you pray privately, but I believe that it's good for us to form a, a ministry of intercession. So when you see things like that, and the Holy Ghost, you know, God is the God of compassion. The Holy Spirit is grieving when you're watching the news. And you can do something about it. Amen. You don't have to wait till if your children are involved, you know. You don't have to wait. You know, how many of you know that if the, if the morality of our country is bad, then it's not good for our kids. Then it's not good for our grandchildren. You don't have to wait till your children get into drugs to pray. You can prepare for them. Can we, can we say Amen. You can prepare for them. You start sowing. Hallelujah. Start doing good. Can we say amen? Amen. And because you start sowing and you keep sowing, the evil one cannot touch your children. Hallelujah. There's so much that we can do as Christians. That's why you should be busy. Amen. Busy doing the right thing. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why God has put so many projects in your heart, so much good in your heart for you to do. Amen. So we can, we can hold back satanic forces. We can abort those parties. We can abort those parties. Amen. We rebuke the devil so that the devil cannot sell drugs to the teenagers. Amen. Amen. We can pray. Amen. So that the government is doing something about it. More stringent measures will be in place against those parties that can just gather anytime, anywhere they want. Hallelujah. Won't you say that is a much better measure than just depending on the, the policeman? Can we say amen? I mean, as, as a parent, your concern should not be just for your individual child. Your concern should be for a lot of children as well. A lot of teenagers. And it takes a big heart to get into that. And, and the good about forming a team of ministry is that we provoke each other into good work. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Number three, what can prayers do? Amen. Prayers can release angelic ministry. Of course, there are devils. But praise God, we outnumber them by two-thirds. For every one devil, there are two angels. Amen. Hallelujah. But angels are waiting for us to release them. We need to release the angels. And if Christians are not doing anything, then nothing is happening. Because we are the commanders of this world. God has given us the power to command this world. And if you look at Daniel chapter 9 verse 21, look at this. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. 
And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh Daniel, I'm now come forth to give you skill and understanding. As you pray, God releases skill and understanding to you. At the beginning of your supplication, the commandment came forth. The order was sent from God to the angels. And I'm come to show you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. When you engage in the ministry of prayer and intercession, you become the greatly beloved of God. Because you are no longer a selfish Christian. You are no longer a self-centered Christian. You know, God's heart is so big, and He wants our hearts to get into the bigness of His heart. So don't just pray, me, my family, you know, me and my family, and me and my family, and me and my family, and me and my family. <laughs> don't. The ministry of intercession is not for you. It's for someone else. Intercessory prayer is for somebody else. It's for somebody else. It's for somebody else. Seek you first the kingdom of God, and all these other things shall be added unto you. You take care of God's kingdom, you take care of God's church, you take care of God's things, God takes care of you. Amen. You take care of his house, he takes care of your house. That's how I live. Amen. And if you look at that, if you look at that, okay. He informed me and talked to me and said, Oh, Daniel, I'm now come forth. At the beginning of your supplications, the commandment came forth. So the angel was released because of Daniel's intercession. As a spiritual person, you need to look at what's happening in the spirit, not what's happening in the natural. Because what's happening in the spirit will manifest in the natural. The natural will always follow the spiritual. It, it's subservient to the spiritual. Amen. What would prayers do? Number four. Prayers will change even cosmic activities to the will of God. How many of you know that in the battles in the Old Testament, Joshua was the one fighting the battles, right? With all the others. Who's the one praying? Who was the one praying when they were fighting? Moses. His arms had to be lifted, representing the prayers, the supplications being given to God and held up by two other people. There had to be people praying. There have to be people praying. There have to be people praying. I believe the Roman Catholic Church was started, you know, the monastery, because they realized the importance of prayer. And so they assigned people especially for the ministry of prayers. You know that there are monks and there are nuns that are especially ordained to pray. They are separated from the world, from the busyness of the world, so as to just engage in prayers. But the devil, you know, perverted that and twisted that. Prayers are very, very important. Very, very important. Extremely important. You cannot leave it to less wish, less wish. Don't wish, pray. Hallelujah. When you pray, then something happens. How many of you remember the flood? The flood. The Brisbane River was flooded. What did we do? Pray. But don't wait till the last minute to pray. We need to pray beforehand. Amen. And you look at this uh, scripture, James chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. Elijah was a man subject to like passions. Why is this scripture? What is this telling us? The word of God is telling us, don't think that Elijah was somebody super spiritual. What he could do that you can't do. No, the Holy Ghost specially used subject to like passions as we are. So the Holy Spirit is encouraging us to, to do what Elijah did. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. So his prayers moved heaven. God did what he asked for in his prayers. Can you see that? And the Holy Spirit had it penned in such a way that he's saying, do the same thing. You employ the same method, you get the same results. How many of you is, an, is a microwave expert? That you know how to, you know, manufacture and do everything to do with microwave? No. 
None of us, right? But how many of us know how to use a microwave? How many, how many of you, because you know how to use a microwave, you get the results? Just that. Just that. You have the same method, you use the same method, you have the same results. What is this method called? Prayer. What is this method called? Devotion to God. Stand in the gap. Pray. Then you have the same results. Okay, let's look at rules for intercessory prayers. Teach me how to pray. Remember the disciples asked Jesus. Now, don't think that your, the success of your life depends on your pastor, depends on... No, the success of your life depends on you. It's very, very important that you know that. It's very, very important that you know that. God has made you in such a way that you are responsible for your life. Can we say amen? Your wife is not responsible for your life. Your children, not anybody else. You are responsible for your life. Amen. But as you pray and intercede and change others, your life will also be changed. Can we say amen? So if you look at rules for intercessory prayers, how do we pray? Teach me how to pray. The disciples asked Jesus. Number one, pray for others, not yourself. That's called intercession. Pray for others, not yourself. Now, I want the, all the wives to listen to me, all the wives. We are called to be our husband's helpers. Your primary function as a wife is to pray for your husband. You have to understand that. All right? You need to stand as an intercessor. And also, all the husbands, listen to me. The Word of God says, love your wife as Christ loves the church. So your primary, your primary responsibility and calling to pray for your wife. As Jesus is now at the right hand of God praying for his church. Do you get that? How many of you get that? Amen. All right. So number one, pray. Number two, keep praying until you see changes. Don't pray Oh, Lord, I thank you that you're doing this for me. I thank you very much. It is your will and you're doing it for me. I thank you. Amen. <laughs> Don't do a casual prayer and you call it a prayer of faith. <laughs> prayer is what engages the heart. Prayer is what engages the heart. Okay, I want you to pay special attention to all these that are following because they are very, very important. I got them from the Holy Spirit. All right, I'm going to stick to my notes now so I won't miss it. Okay, keep praying. Keep praying until you see changes. For example, you're praying for your son. You need to keep praying for your son. You need to keep praying. You keep a prayer journal and you look back and you see, whoa, I've prayed for two years and now I see changes. All right? Don't give up. Keep praying until you see results, until you see their maturity, until you see their character starts to change, until you see that their thinking starts to change, that their temperament starts to change. Keep praying. Well, you ask me, Pastor Dora, does that mean that I'm not believing? You are believing. That's why you're praying. Don't follow methods. Don't follow technical methods. Prayer is not following methods. Prayer is engaging the heart. When you pray, don't just keep reciting scriptures. They won't impress God one bit. And when you pray, don't just keep saying, Lord, I glorify you. Lord, I magnify you. Lord, I worship you. When it comes to the prayers of intercession, your focus is on the people you're praying for. It is not for you to keep saying, and I love you, God, I praise you, God. That is worship and praise. When it comes to prayer and in the prayers of intercession, all your focus is on the object. All your focus is on the people that you're praying for, the object that you're interceding for. You break the power of the devil. Holy Spirit, influence them, captivate their heart, stir them in them holy emotions. Devil, you're not allowed to affect them. You're not allowed to influence them. You're not allowed to affect them through the mass media. You're not allowed to talk to them. You're not allowed to put thoughts in their minds. You're not allowed to stir up ugly emotions of rebellion in my kids. Go in the name of Jesus. You're engaging the heart. It doesn't matter how many scriptures you have. You may not even have one scripture. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. If you know what you're doing, 
If you have the spiritual understanding and the insight, you don't have to, you don't have to recite your scriptures verbatim. There are so many translations and so many versions. You think you've recited the scripture? Well, it may be King James, but not New Living. It may be New Living, but it's not NIV. So which, which, which version are you reciting? Do you know what I mean? Don't get, don't get caught up in the legality. It's the engaging of the heart. It's the fervent prayer of a righteous man, engaging his righteous spirit, engaging his compassion. When it comes to intercession, the greatest force that you need is compassion. Love for people. Love for people. It's the compassion of Jesus that heals the sick. So when it comes to even prayers of healing, it's compassion. It's like that person becomes all that you care for. That person becomes all that you're praying for. Do you get that? Hallelujah. And that is God having all of you. Amen. Hallelujah. So you keep prevailing over the life of those that you pray for so that the activities in their life will conform to God's will and plan. So what is your prayer doing? Your prayer is driving away. Um, let me give you an example. For example, this, 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 um, this thing here stands for the person that you're praying for, okay? All right? Um, are, you, are you doing okay, the camera? Are you, do, are you capturing me? Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's see this chair, okay? We present the person that you're praying for, okay? And what you're doing is that you rebuke the forces that are attaching to him or her, the forces that are influencing his thinking, the forces that are stirring the emotions in him, the forces that are putting seeds of thoughts into his mind or emotions in his soul or pictures in his dreams or um, spirit of rebellion in him. Suddenly he feels antagonistic against his teachers or antagonistic against his parents. You know what I'm talking about? I talked about the wicked wind, the evil wind that's blowing everywhere. How many of you have ever felt suddenly you get antagonistic or hostile against someone? How many of you have felt that? Yeah, that's from the devil. How many of you have seen babies or even children suddenly moved by something and their emotions start to change? You know what I'm talking about? How many of you have had suddenly have a thought in your mind that you've never come up with or an idea that comes to you? So you know what I'm talking about? You know, there is a lot that's happening in the atmosphere that you can't see. For example, a spirit of sleepiness suddenly comes on that person and he's driving 120 kilometer per hour and he's dozing off. Why? Because there's a spirit of sleepiness. Or what about a spirit of insomnia? He needs to rest. He needs to sleep. But the spirit of insomnia keep irritating that person, keep irritating that person, and he becomes so irritated, can't sleep. Or, keep, or another spirit that keeps putting thoughts in his mind, keeps putting thoughts in her mind, and he starts having so many thoughts, so many thoughts, and his mind is working and working and working, and he has no power over his mind. He can't sleep. What about hyperactivity? This child, how come he's so hyperactive? There are demons that are driving him and driving him. You know, he, he doesn't have to rest. He goes from one activity to another, one activity to another, and he becomes restless, restless. So what you do in prayer is that you arrest those spirits. You abort those devils. You command those devils to go. And you say to the demons, you're not allowed to attach to their soul because demons attach to the souls of people like ticks that attach to a dog. And demons will not go until you mean business with them and you beat them and you drive them away with the force of righteousness, the force of love, the force of compassion. Hallelujah. The knowledge of the truth, knowing who you are in Christ, your authority in Christ Jesus. Amen. So I, read, I wrote there in the notes, release the lordship of Jesus Christ over them. You say, I release the power of the gospel over you. To rescue you and deliver you from self-destruction. Or I release and I proclaim the victory of Jesus Christ over you. Okay? The Holy Spirit will give you words. And as you engage the Spirit, your words become more and more powerful and specific and forceful in the Spirit. 
okay? And uh, keep influencing them in the spirit, okay? And what happens is that you'll notice that they don't know it, and there will be thoughts that will be given to them. And then they will say to you, hey, mom, I have this thought today. I want to be a good boy. And they will say to you, hey, I don't know why, but I feel like I'm maturing. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It's because of the prayers, the angelic ministry, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, okay? So keep influencing them in the Spirit. Thoughts will be giving them, okay? So keep declaring the Word, the will of God over them. Keep influencing their life in the Spirit by your faith and your love and your prayers. All right? So once, once again, I... I reiterate and I reinforce the importance of your decision, your commitment, and your discipline. Prayer is a powerful spiritual activity that must not be dependent on your soul. You must not live your life by your soul. You must live your life by the will of God. Set your alarm clock. Get up in the morning to pray. If you can't do half an, if you can't do one hour, start with half an hour or even fifteen minutes, so that it builds up into a pattern, a habit. You will get up even without the alarm clock. You ask me, Pastor Dora, do I have to do that? Yes, if you want to good, live a good life, if you really care about your family, if you really care about your church, if you really care about your country. But if you want to leave it to chance, then don't pray. And then you don't, you don't sacrifice the time for prayer. You reap the result of a prayerless life, which is chaotic and sad. So it's better to pray before bad things happen than to pray after bad things happen. And the good news is that if you pray instead of bad things happen, Good things will happen. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. You bring in the goodness of the Lord into your life. Amen. Into the people's life. Hallelujah. So prayer is a divine heavenly activity. It's the expression of your love for God and for men. It's your obedience to the two commandments that Jesus gave to the church. Love others as yourself. Love the Lord and love others as yourself. All right, let's go to laboring in prayer. Okay, a very important part, laboring in prayer. How many of you are enjoying it? Yes, all right. If you look at the notes, prayer is work. It's called labor. It is not like praise and worship. It's not like meditating on the word. Prayer is hard work on the soul and on the body. All right? Understand that. And uh, you can read the book of Colossians for yourself, chapter 4, verse 12, about um, Epaphras laboring fervently for the people in prayers. All right? So I've said just now, laboring in prayer is not an easy, casual prayer. All right? There is a price that you have to pay. Okay? And uh, these are the things that you need to avoid, that you should not have. Don't be lazy. Don't be indifferent. Don't have a callous or a hard heart. Don't say that, oh, you know, the reason why they're not doing well is because, you know, they're bad. You know, they haven't paid attention to God. They don't come to church. Don't do that. Pray for them. You understand what I'm saying? All right? Whenever you see anything wrong, whenever you see something wrong, start praying. Whenever you see something wrong, stop complaining, stop judging, stop praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I've explained all that. Thank you, Jesus. So I've explained that you, at the, at the bottom of that, I, I said to you, I said, uh, if you look at agonizing in prayer, agonizing in prayer is fighting against the dictates of the flesh in yourself. Sometimes you have to agonize in prayer. What I mean is that you don't want to pray in and of yourself. You don't want to pray. So you have to defeat the dictates of your flesh. You pray even though you don't like, you don't like it. So you take authority over your flesh. Even when you don't like it, you pray. I remember uh, for myself, you know how winter is very cold. And it's not easy to get up in bed, you know, to get, up, to get out of bed. So what I did would be, I would have my uh, jacket, you know, 
near to my bed and have all my shoes, my slippers, my socks close by so that when I get up, I would quickly put them on and pray. <laughs> so you have to get yourself ready. You know, you, you have to prepare yourself so you're ready in prayer. Amen. And uh, in China, I set the alarm clock I have, because of the time difference. I set the alarm clock so I get up in prayer. Okay. And uh, you, just, you just have to do diff different things. You, you know your flesh. So you need to know how you, you to win over your flesh. You know what I'm talking about? And if you know that you need to sleep, so don't wait till 12 o'clock to go to bed and then uh, get up 5 o'clock to pray. So it's better that you go to bed maybe 10 o'clock and then so you can get up 6 o'clock to pray. So, you know, you have to schedule yourself. And you notice that you'll mature a lot more as a Christian. You will mature. Your life will be very different as a Christian. Um, it is true that there, there is a price that you have to pay. You know, being a, a, a great Christian, moving in the power of God does not come cheap. Okay? It comes with discipline. It comes with commitment. It comes with determination. Okay? But it's a lot better, a lot better to be like that. Amen. And uh, when you pray, you're also fighting against the flesh of the people that you're praying for. For example, you see your son and he's being very lazy or he's very rebellious. So when you pray, your prayers are directed against his flesh. All right? And when you've done that, then you don't have to beat him up. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. So in your prayers, you are directed against the flesh of the person, and also you are directing it against the devil. All right? For example, you don't have to worry about your children going to parties or your girls coming home late when you deal with the demons of fornication. All right? So you can pray like this. My children, they don't like going out at night. My children love holiness, love righteousness. My girls, they are committed, committed to, to the husband that God has for them. Amen. Their hearts are full on for God. They, they receive from the Lord. Their spouses come from the Lord. So you start declaring the word of God over them, the will of God over them. The Holy Spirit will give you prayer. Okay? All right? It's very important. And if you look at the, uh, the last point, Praying with faith. Now, very important that you pray with faith. When you pray, don't worry. Don't doubt. Know that because the very fact that God has called us to pray, that already tells us that he's answering our prayers. If he's not answering our prayers, why would he tell us to pray? It doesn't make sense. Isn't that right? If he's the one who is teaching you to pray, he is the one who is telling you to pray, it flows automatically, logically, that he's answering our prayers. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Come on. Yes. Understand that, right? Because these are the rules that he has given to us. And so when we run our life with these rules, then these things will happen. Isn't that right? It's just like when you tune your television, then you tune it. When you turn it on, it will give you the right channel. Right? Because you follow the menu. You follow the menu, you get the results. So the key is that you don't doubt. If God says that I'm the one that healeth you, then it is his will to heal you. You know, if not, why would he say that? Right? Isn't that right? It, it takes religion to twist the word of God. Religion is a liar. Religion always says, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. God may not heal you. It's not the will of God to heal you. You're not having great faith for God to heal you. God is not hard to work with. Can we say amen? You know, the devil keeps telling you that God is hard to work with. It's hard to get miracles. It's hard to get results. I tell you, for me to go to a doctor to have my cough healed, usually it would take how long? At least one week. At least one week for the drugs to work. Isn't that right? At least. But God healed me within two minutes. So I would say healing from God is cheap. Didn't cost me any money. And it didn't cost me any time. Isn't that amen? Isn't that amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. That's the best way to live. So pay the price and live like this. Amen. So if you look at that, um, if you look at that uh, with Hebrews, for we have not an high priest, 
which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Cultivate a soft heart. Be touched with people's infirmities. When you see people having it wrong or not having it right, be touched with their weakness instead of be attacked by a critical spirit. Okay? Instead of being annoyed, be touched with their weakness and start praying for them. For Jesus was touched with our infirmities. So don't be callous. Don't give up on people. Not all prayers have instantaneous answers. Okay? Not all prayers are instantaneous. Not all healing is instantaneous. You tell me, I want to ask you, who has a greater faith? The one who is believing God for one year or the one who can only believe God for one minute? One year. I haven't seen results yet, but I'm still believing. I haven't seen results yet. I'm still believing. I haven't seen results yet. I'm still believing. So would you call this Greek faith? Yes. The devil tries to cheat us and deceive us into, if we don't see instantaneous answers, that means we've got it wrong. We're not getting it. That's the devil lying to you. All right? It doesn't matter. Like for me, like God stopped the coughing. It was stopped right away when I was in China, right? And how many of you noticed that I was still, my nose was still running, even when I came back here? I mean, God miraculously arrested all that during the, the wedding and the graduation. But when I came back here, I, I, I taught the first service, my nose was running. But as far as I'm concerned, I was healed. The symptoms do not stop me from believing God's word. I was healed. And the symptoms all left. In the end, they all gone. Amen. So the key is that you keep holding on to your faith. Keep holding on to your faith. Because there's no sickness in your spirit. Amen. There's no sickness in the spirit. And when the devil sees that your faith is for real, when the devil sees that your faith is for real, that's when he gets hurt and tormented. Remember he said to Jesus, how come you've come before your time to torment us? Your faith torments the devil and they can't stay. They have to go. So you have to work it. Okay? You have to work it to it torments. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So get that right. Okay? So pray with faith. Don't go through the motion. Okay? Understand, I explained to you, intercessory prayer is changing people. All right? Declare the victory of God over their lives. And finally, develop your ministry of intercession. It takes time to develop yourself into intercession, into prayers. But it's worth it. They're great rewards. And finally, Galatians 4, 19, my little children of whom I, pre I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. If the apostle Paul, a great man of faith and power, had to travail, how much more we have to travail? So that's why I told you that prayers are not all instantaneous. All right? And Matthew 7, 20, wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Pray till you see the fruits. Pray till you see the results. Second Thessalonians 3, 1, finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of God may have a free course, even though you're doing the will of God, but you still need prayers. All right? And even the, the apostle Paul said, pray for us. So pray for your pastor. Pray for your church. Don't think that, oh, Pastor Dora, she's a, a woman of faith and power. Yes, I am, but you still need to pray. And it's your duty and responsibility to pray for your church and for your pastor. Can we say amen? And 2 Timothy 4, 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the, my course. I have kept the faith. That should be the goal for each and every one of us. There will be a crown laid up for you in heaven. Rewards that are for you in heaven. The end of your life is heaven. The end of your earthly life is your heavenly life. There's glory waiting for you to get. Amen? Let's pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. Father, I pray and I thank you for all these wonderful and precious people. 
Hallelujah. And when we pray, we do not pray with hardship. We pray with victory and joy and peace. It's never hard to pray. It's our honor and our privilege to pray. And when we pray, we beat up the devil. We defeat every demon. And we release the will, the perfect will of God, and we release the power of God. And Father, we take the responsibility of standing in the gap for those that are weak, for those that are ignorant, for those that are lost, for those that are blind, for those that are hard-hearted. And Father, we, if you would agree with me, just lift up your hands to God. And Father, we just want to give ourselves to you. And we say here, I am, send me. And we say, draft us in, into the army of intercession. Lord, we want to serve you with all of our hearts. And Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that you order our time, amen, so that we are the user of our time and not the slaves, nor the victims of time. Father, we praise you and thank you. Let our time be containers of good, not evil. Containers of the will of God, the blessings of God, not the works of the enemy. And we declare that our life is good, our future is good as we take up the ministry of intercession in your love and in your honor, in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. And for those of you that want to be involved in the ministry of intercession, uh, please give us your name. You can give your name to Chandra. Uh, I will be personally heading this ministry. And it's an online ministry uh, with the phone and all that. And uh, prayers will be given to you so that you'll be praying. And uh, we'll be praying when the needs arise or when we have the Holy Spirit telling us what to pray. So that we'll be there together holding up one another, lifting up one another and doing what God has called us to do. Amen. Hallelujah.